morning. I just wanted to show you what's going on on our farm at the moment. So this is Pink Pearl. It's just opened for the first time. Um, we've had Condor open. Um, we've also got, these are our companion plants. And this one here was sold to us as white jade, uh, red jade, but it, obviously it's not because the flower's not red. But we are getting flat, lots and lots of flowers opening. So this one, Tropical Pink, opened yesterday, but the bees are still trying to make their way into it. Um, and we put in new um, varieties um, last week. So we've got USA Hannah, uh, Thai Red Blood, and look at this one. This is so amazing. There's about 15 bees in this one soaking up the pollen now i'm thinking it's pink panther yep it is so you can see we spray with liquid potash every two weeks so we get excessive um flowers and buds so we've got this guy here which is turning into a fruit these are flower set flower this one would have flowered first about the same time as the other one um, then this one would have been a week later, and then this one a week later. Um, so we get successive buds on all of our plants due to spraying with liquid potash. Um, what else is going on here? We've got Delight budding as well. We've also had about 130, 140 mil of rain over the last three days. So that also washes off the pollen. Um, this is tropical pink. So tropical pink's in flower. Then we've got another new variety on this post. Um, Hawaiian pink. Pelora. Um, Pelora is delicious. And he has some little buds coming on here. So that's that one then we've got pt7 which has suffered quite a bit of rot issues uh, but still flowering um, this is amazing so this one here is amarano um, you can see the color of the flowers um, we've also just topped up all the soil We've just got a new batch of soil from a new supplier. We weren't really happy with the local stuff we were getting. Um, we've got purple haze here. Then Y68 is really coming into itself. You can see how beautiful and red that flower is. Um, we've got not red curly as well. Ocoponus, which has a really interesting green um, skin and a white sun protective coating. We've had a little bit of trouble with ants nibbling away at our flowers. So you can see that one's had a bit of a nibble. Um, we've got new, more new varieties. Thai Red has suffered a little bit of rust issues but that's fairly typical of those varieties. Um, this one's from the prickly patch then Dark Star. It's got an amazing amount of buds. So all of these plants, when they look like this, they're new ones we've planted this year, like this. Um, these are ones we had growing in pots and chopped all the heads off to move them to our new farm. We've got Venus, Aztec Gem. Um, isn't doing much at the moment. Lee's Purple Haze. Natural Mystique. Um, US Natural Mystique, Connie Mayer, it's always struggled a bit. The soil we got for this row wasn't great at the start, so they have, this row has struggled a little bit more. I'll show you Asunta too, that has a beautiful red 
purple flower, sorry. Um, and I've got just planted next to her centre five. Neon, self-pollinating. Very healthy. One of my favourites. Dark red skin on the um, limbs, so it doesn't suffer as much rust. A centre one as well we've got. Um, purple megalanthus, another one of my favourites, a bit sherbety. Uh, Desert King US, um, Cuban Red, pretty hazardous with rust and rot, not a big fan. Um, Rixford, Scott's Purple, same thing, not the best with rust. Um, I think this one is Purple Haze, but this one's actually a red, it's not purple haze. So I try to keep one per post so we know exactly what we've got. Sugar Dragon. This would probably be one of my husband's and my favourite varieties. We'll be planting a lot more of these. Um, delicious, small fruit, lunchbox size. That's kind of what we want for our kids. And it's a nice size to eat. Clubium Supreme Red. Everyone you talk to either rips them out and not a big fan. Isis Gold, we've just given a nice new dose of soil and this is um, Sinespans. Now this variety has no thorns. So you can see there, nothing going on there. Nice sort of different shaped flower. Um, white Sapphire. See, even if your branch isn't perfect, it can still produce fruit and flowers. So another white sapphire, Isis gold looking in a bit better nick. So it's currently November in Australia. Um, we're in Agnes Waters. Um, Voodoo's Child, another nice self-pollinating universal pollinator. Edgar's Baby. Um, so have we got Scott's Purple, that one's a lot healthier. Um, you can see the difference just between this Scott's Purple and the Scott's Purple we just walked past because um, this was a better quality soil. So a year and a half ago, all these cuttings fitted in a banana box. So they were probably about 40 centimetres um, long and this is what we've got a year and a half later. And this delight in particular has about 19 buds on it. So this is the amount of fruit and flowers you can get off one dragon fruit plant. You can plant four um, varieties per post. This is Tresia, a commercial variety. So you can see how vigorous this one grows. Haley's Comet. Kathy Van Arum, you see our little friendly kangaroos that live on our block. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of what's going on at the moment. Um, Panama Berry for a windbreak. What else have we got? Sorry if this is bumpy. Um, Queensland Red. So this was apparently developed in Bundaberg. There's a lot of um, Rumour that it's just Columbia Supreme Red, but we'll keep you posted. Um, Hot Pink Lady, delicious bright pink flesh. Um, one thing we're wanting to do is do genetic testing. So this is something I'm pretty passionate about. There's a lot of dragon fruit varieties that are similar and people have just been renaming um, to create a market. I name them as I purchase them or as I find them. I don't um, rename any varieties for any other reason but purely because then I know where, where, what I've got, where they came from to then do genetic testing on them. See this little guy? This is dwarf orange so he's meant to have an orange fruit. Um, so I want full transparency in our farm of what we've got is what it is. So genetic testing is one thing I'm aiming to do. 
giant orange. Tanzan Pink hasn't done anything yet. Um, another thing you can do is come and stay with us. This is a great time of year to come and stay. I'm going to show you this one because I love the colouring on this. And you can see the spots as well. So this is red crystal. Grows a little bit different, looks a little bit different too. Um, so where my car's parked is two powered caravan sites. Um, you can come stay with us. Um, and you can pick any herbs that are in these gardens planted between. So that and that's something you can do. Great for a family, you can feed the chickens, that type of thing. As well as um, we have an honesty box at the front where we sell our honey and different things. And things that we like to do differently with our hip camps. So you can book online at hip camps for our caravan sites is compost and recycling. We like to um, save your compost and turn it into soil to make more healthy plants. So you, while you're here, there's some basil. We've also got Arigiano, which is flower, about to flower. Um, Grey water goes straight into the garden. And this is the garden. So we've got mother of all herbs, Brazilian spinach. You can cook up just like a normal spinach. It does have axillic acid, so you do want to cook it. Um, mother of all herb is a great sort of pizza topper. Salt bush. Eggplant, there's always lots of eggplants. Some reason no one wants to eat the eggplants. Malaba chestnut and lots of different varieties of banana. So there is about 15 different varieties of banana just planted around this patch. We've got rosemary, pineapple, more Brazilian spinach because it's such a good staple. Eggplant, more eggplant. A pepino melon that hasn't quite ripened properly. There was a sweet capsicum there, but it's not quite working. Chilies, popcorn cassia you can't eat, but scrunch up the leaves. It smells like fresh buttered popcorn. We've got some chives even growing in there. And some more basil. So I use basil as a companion plant for all of our bees. And then this beauty is Panama berry. This is mix and my favourite. Um... So the bees love it, it produces a little berry, and when it goes red, it's time to eat. Great shade tree. Now this tree is only about six months old. Oh, not even, no, sorry, four months old, because it was planted and it was just in about a 120 mil pot, and now look at it. So far shade tree for these caravan sites. Um, over this side, we've got kale, spinach, Parsley, more parsley, thyme, variegated thyme, more bananas. And I've tried to label the bananas so you can sort of have a walk. Same with the dragon fruit. Um, when you're at our farm, you can wander, walk, and just have a look. We've got beautiful little daisy chamomile flowers there. Um, so you can make chamomile tea. We've got sage. And then even a little native garden down to our dam. And feel free, I always leave some um, feed out for the chickens. So you can feed the chickens whenever you want. And you've got a view of Round Hill. So this is our dragon fruit farm. Thank you for watching. So you can book our caravan sites on hip camps um, in Agnes Water. Rare dragon fruit. And... Um, you can find our website www.raredragonfruit.com.au to purchase any of our cuttings and permaculture and companion plants. Um, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all the normal stuff guys. Alright, thank you for watching. Sorry if this is long winded. Hope you enjoyed. I've tried to include as much as I can in a short time. Um, thanks. Bye.